Hello, Hello, I'm Anna Mackay and this video is on, is on sign, sign diagrams. Make, Make sure you have your graphics calculator handy. All right, so drawing a sign diagram. First of all, starting with a graph. Hopefully this is not the first time you've ever done a sign diagram, so it's, um, you've got some background knowledge. Using a ruler every time you draw this too, not like my freehand style there. The sign diagram actually represents the x-axis at this point in time in year 11 level. When we do calculus in the future, we'll go into more detail. So it's a rough description of where the graph, so in this case the curved line, is in relation to the x-axis. So we're looking at the points where it crosses the x-axis, which are in this case the x-intercepts. They are the numbers that you put on your sign diagram. So here we have a 1 and a 5. And the sign diagram is a visual representation. So looking at the, the first part of the graph here on the left, is it is above the x-axis, so to imply above, we put a positive sign. Between one and five, it's below, so we put a subtract sign, and then after five, it's above. So that's what that implies. The second one here, again, we put on the x-intercepts and any vertical asymptotes. So you can visually see we have an x-intercept at one, one at four, and one at eight. And at six, we have a vertical asymptote. And the way we represent that is by a dashed line going just slightly above the sign diagram there. Again, you need to look at um, visually where the function is, which is the y values in relation to the x-axis. Um, I'll just put an x there. So prior to one, we are above, so we have a plus. Between 1 and 4, it is below, so we put a subtract, a minus for below. Between 4 and 6, it's above. Then we have our vertical asymptote, and it is below between 6 and 8. And then after 8, it is above. So there's our sign diagram for that. Next, Next these. these. So my, so my advice, advice for this is, as, as often, often as possible, possible create, create yourself a picture, picture of what, what you're, you're dealing with. So, so get your graphics calculator, calculator out, put, put that into graphs, graphs and see what it looks like. like. So, that so that you've got a picture to go with um, um, the algebra, algebra that you're going to be practising. I hope you'll agree it's a parabola. Perhaps I'll just do a little sketch down here to know what we're heading towards. Something like this. So the, so the sign, sign diagram, diagram, when you get it factorised, factorised like that, that we have a sign diagram, is you're exactly essentially using the null factor law to solve for x. So as, so as you know, it'll be alternating signs, so it's when each term is equal to zero, and, and we would have our, our x-intercept, our, our roots, are negative three and one. one. Now, now if, if you, you didn't have this picture down here, you would, you would be wondering, well, which way around does it go? Being single factors, they're going to alternate signs. So, so if, if we, we can work out one, one sign, we can alternate around those x-intercepts. So algebraically, how do you do that? Well, one technique is you, you take a number and you substitute it in. I suggest picking easy numbers. Ones or zeros are often handy. Or multiples of 10. Let's do that then. If we pick the number 10, so 10, so you don't have to write this part. The only part you have to do is the sign diagram. But I'm, but I'm just going to show you the thinking. If x is equal to 10, what would our two factors be? We'd have a 13 there and a 9 there. And all you have to work out is, is that a positive or a negative number? That's all you need. It's a positive. So that means in that section, it's above the x-axis because the y value would be positive. And being single factors, we know it alternates. And that, and that matches, matches nicely with the graph, with the graph uh, visual, visual that we have. The next, the next one, one. You draw your sign, sign diagram, put x, put x and, you, and put you put on your factors. factors. So, so here we've, we've got, got a repeated factor of three. three. Now, now repeated factors have the same sign about the x-axis. You, you just, just need to decide is the graph, the graph above or below. Again, Again use, use your graphics calculator to back up the algebra that you might be using. Just to check with the algebra, Pick a, pick a number, number for x. x. Um, um, my, my suggestion, suggestion is, is pick 1. So, so 1 will be on, on the left here. here. So, so if x is equal to 1, I'm going to change that. I'm going to go 0 because, because 0 is easy, easy to work out. out. We, would we would have, have negative 4. four. Zero, 0 take 3 is um, 
just, just negative, negative three, three and, that's and that's squared. Is that, is that going to be a positive, positive or a negative number? number? Well, this, this bit here would become positive, positive and then a positive, positive multiplied by a negative gives us a negative. negative. So, that so that means on our sign diagram, diagram we have a negative there and a negative, and a negative here. If you, if you were to check that graph on your calculator, calculator it's something, something along those lines and it touches. So it's um, below the x-axis both times. Next, Next um, last, um, one last one here, uh, rational, uh, rational functions. functions. Use, your, Use your calculator. See what it looks like. So we are so going, we are to, going to have a vertical asymptote in this one. In this one. What numbers do we put what on the sign diagram? So the sign diagram? to find so your factors, your roots, your roots, you're essentially putting the numerator, the numerator equal, to zero. equal to zero. And what value of x what would that give us? Would that give us? One. So we'll put one. that on our diagram. So that on our diagram. And then to work out the vertical, out asymptotes, the vertical asymptotes, asymptotes, you put the denominator, put the denominator equal, to zero equal to zero and solve for x. And, solve for x. and that would give us the value that of the value negative of a half. And asymptotes, and asymptotes are a dashed line. Are a dashed line. Now, all you need to do is work out plus or minuses around these. Around this. Well, you can well, use facts that because they're single facts factors that, that they're going to alternate. Going to but alternate. first of all, we have to know all, which, ones which ones are positive and which ones are negative. Positive which ones if negative. you have it on your calculator, you you'll be able to see that straight away. Algebraically, what to pick? Again, let's try if x was equal to 10. Um, for the numerator, we'd have 9, and the denominator, we'd have, what, 21. Is that a positive or a negative number? It's a positive number. So we would put a positive there on that side where x was 10, and then we alternate signs. And if you had drawn that on your calculator with an asymptote at negative a half, you would see it's something approximately like this. And that matches and nicely that matches with what we know. Nice above, the x -axis, above the x-axis, then below for a little bit, and then above. Okay, so that's how we draw okay, sign so diagrams. Draw sign the next video on this the series is not 3F, series is not it's 3F. 3G.1, graphs, graphs of circles. Thumbs up and subscribe, to the, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.